up. I'm gonna mute the phone. Welcome to First Christian Church in Concord, California. One of the hard things about being live is when the phone rings and you haven't muted it, so I apologize. But welcome to First Christian Church in Concord, California. We are one church in multiple locations as we gather together on Zoom and on Facebook Live. We believe that everyone is an equal child of God who deserves deep and meaningful connections, a purpose-filled life, and love expressed through belonging, service, and justice. We are an inclusive, loving, and open and affirming community of faith and action, seeking, serving, and celebrating Christ through open minds, willing hands, and committed hearts. We strive to be an anti-racist and pro-reconciling congregation, and we welcome everyone, regardless of ability, gender, sexual, or affectional orientation. So welcome and welcome home. Carrie, will you let us know what's happening? Yes, good morning, everybody. It's nice to see your faces. Um, just a few reminders about Zoom. It's old hat by now. We've been doing this for over a year, which is still surprising to me. <laughs> but um, wanted to just go ahead and let you know we are recording. Uh, if you would not like to be seen, you can go ahead and turn off your video. That's fine with us. Um, everyone is muted just to help with sound quality, but um, we would really like to hear from you. You can use your reaction buttons in the bottom. A little surprise emoji here. Um, you can chat in the chat right now, just to help you find it, I'm gonna put our attendance link so you can uh, register online. Let us know that you were here today. We would love to um, know that. And also um, you can unmute yourself during Signs of Life, which comes after the very first song. Uh, and that's just a time where you can share where you've seen God working in your life the past week. And then also during Prayers of the People where you can speak aloud the concerns um, and joys that are on your heart today. So make sure um, you unmute yourself for those things. If you're on a computer, you can press the space bar. Works like a walkie talkie. You can just press the button, talk and then release and you'll be muted again. Same with your phone. You can do star six uh, to talk and star six to mute yourself again. And um, I think that's it. All right, we'll go to our first song then. <laughs> Is there sun coming up in my soul, Lord, in my soul? Is there sun coming up in my soul, Lord, in my soul? I see the light, I see the light, I see the light.
I got a little notification that my internet is unstable. So FYI, if I disappear, there's something going on over here. I don't know what. <laughs> but and we got I... you covered if we do. So <laughs> good, you're good. You. Uh, we're going to do signs of life. Um, any way that you have seen God showing up in your life this past week? Anything that you would like to share? Emrys, I see your hand. Yeah, this last week it was Bill's birthday, and for the first time in nearly a year, I saw my daughter and her family. My granddaughter made a lovely birthday cake. We had to have it outside, and it was cold, and I had to have gloves on even deep. Oh. <laughs> but it was so nice to be together. Yeah. And on Saturday, we have our second dose of the vaccine, so everything's looking yeah. great. <laughs> that's awesome sign of life i love it uh, uh diana. diana yeah diana uh, my friend dylan that you all have been praying for the one who has the bone cancer gut i'm jealous he got to go to a red Sox game this week <laughs> oh yay yeah, al although it snowed yesterday or friday but uh he was in a he was in one of those nice little cushy box seats so the weather didn't affect him but yeah, so he's doing pretty well. The, the clinical trial doesn't seem to be wiping him out like the cancer, the, the uh, chemo was. So wonderful Keep up the prayers. And my friend Sam, who has COVID, is off a vent. He's still in the hospital, but he's not on a respirator anymore, and he's doing better. So Amen. thank you for the prayers. Yes, sign of life for sure. Yes, uh, Scott, I see your hand. Yeah, um, I actually have a message from Philip Noel. Uh, his he's having audio problems um but you know he he sent me a direct message that he'd like me to read so after his fall a few hours later he was found and rescuers were able to transport him to the hospital he was able to recover to be able to call an angel that immediately drove to his home and took care of his dog and house the lord gave him a second chance of life two ways so Thank you, FCC, and especially thank you, Terry Gross. Aww. Lovely, wonderful. Philip, it's so good to see you. That is a sign Amen. of life for us. Yes. It is yeah. so good that you're here. Yes, thank you for sharing with us. Judy, I see your hand. Hi, 
Okay. Mine is, um, it's both a sign of life and a prayer request. Um, my granddaughter, Bella, is going to be going to uh, Disney World for a week. She'll be leaving the latter part of this week. And she hasn't been doing very much with the church, and it's concerned me. She came to me this week and asked if I would ask the church to please pray for her because she's concerned about the flight. So Aww. if we could pray for her for traveling mercies and just, I, I, I'm thrilled that she wants the church to be praying for her. I thought that yes. was a good sign. Oh, that's wonderful. Absolutely. We'll and we will, Bella. we will pray for her for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Andy, I saw your hand. Yes. Um, so <clears throat> I just wanted to share, we have outside the office window um, up in the eaves um, and it's kind of happens every year, but um, we have two, a, a morning dove that has built a nest there and they had, and she had her babies for the spring. Um, so I've been watching the, the babies and her feeding them and them growing and it's just a, a a great sign of life to be able to look up at that every morning and watch them. Yes, a literal sign of life. I love it. <laughs> That's great. I love it when the birds come and nest and you have little babies around. It's so fun. Diane, I see your hand. Sorry. Can, we okay, can. sorry. I had to find the unmute on the. <laughs> um, it's it's small, but in it was just wonderful. Um, this week I received a package from Vicki um, De La uh from our church, and she, as you know, is the one that makes the hand warmers. And I've just been saying how wonderful they are, and I just love how she does that. And so she sent me a package, and I was running out to a rehearsal with the Clarinet Fusion. If you guys remember that group played before us at one of our um festivities but there's a little a group that that i rehearsed with and um we have because of covid we have to rehearse outside and it last time it was just super freezing well anyway the package came in i said i, I gotta open it i'm late but I, I feel like i need to open this package i opened it up i took it with me to the rehearsal everyone took a hand warmer we <laughs> all used them and oh my gosh they were so thankful to vicky and vicky thank you for your donation and your love for for helping others and caring for others so that's what I want and I want of our own Christian women that I just adore no oh, I love that yay sign of life hand warmers yeah hand warm hands are a definite sign of life I agree <laughs> <laughs> and thank you Vicki so sweet for you to share your talents with others uh yes Elaine Um, okay. <laughs> Good morning. Um, a sign of life. We, we had our house and grounds, our monthly house and grounds yesterday, and it was a beautiful day. And our small but mighty group uh, came out and I think identified yet another leak in our leaking pipes. So we, we I guess, got to put together another plan to, to fix yet another leak, but got some other stuff done, trimmed some trees and had a good time and and then the guys were researching bicycles. Somebody got a new bicycle. So they were <laughs> right around on the bike and checking it out. So it was a fun day. Oh, fun. Awesome. Yes, thank you for sharing. Thank you to all who showed up for uh, the house and grounds yesterday. We appreciate all of you. Not happy about the leak, but no. yeah. Yeah, another leak. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you for all that you all do. Yeah. Right. Anyone else want to share? All right, then we'll move on. Okay. Oh, yes. I'll do just a really quick thing. Okay. Um, later in a couple of weeks, we're going to have, or is it a, yeah, I, technically I guess it's two weeks. We're going to have um, a meeting of the re-entry committee, the re-entry team. So we're starting, for those of you who are like, when are we coming back together? We're starting to make those, we're going to start making those plans. So awesome. Uh, just be patient. We're, we <laughs> want everybody to be safe. So just be patient with us, but, but we're coming. So 
Oh, and Mary and Betty are on today. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, wonderful. Then I'm going to invite Meg to unmute herself and start us off with the call to worship. Thank you everyone for sharing today. That was really nice. Thank you, Carrie. Good morning. Peace be with you. This is Jesus' blessing for his followers, including us. Peace be with you. Jesus continues to startle us, calling us to be witnesses. Peace be with you. We receive the gift of God's shalom and rejoice as disciples of the resurrected Christ. Will you please pray with me? Oh God, stepping into the turmoil of life, you still offer peace to all who seek to follow Jesus as the Christ. We rejoice as we read of that calm voice chasing away darkness and distress, bringing new light and insight to life and death. In an upper room, the living one made the extraordinary experience of resurrection and everyday encounter. Today, those words of peace still are hurry. We're grateful the Easter story is able to be savored, filling our imaginations, encouraging each of us to dream of what is possible. Continue to make us whole in our identity as disciples, O oh Lord. Challenge us to be truth-telling witnesses of your love made known in Christ. Amen. Now, throughout the world, lighting candles is a sacred ritual. We light a candle for many purposes to illuminate darkness, dedicate prayers, solidify intentions, offer blessings, invoke the spirit, and to nourish grateful living. We welcome you to the practice of lighting a candle, connecting you to inner stillness and to our community at First Christian Church in Concord. Feel this connectedness. Slow your pace and offer these moments your full attention. Light your candle as a witness to the presence of the one who is the resurrection and the life. And remember to not leave lit candles unattended in your home. Let this be a sacred time, O oh God, in which we let what has begun gradually grow, finding within us the patience and trust that allows us to tend our concerns with wisdom. You delight to show your mercy. 
Amen. As we prepare to bring our joys as well as our concerns before God and one another, I want to invite you to uh, share the prayer requests that you have um, in the chat if you would like those repeated in the intersections um, so that we can make sure we capture everyone's, um, everyone's name or situation. Um, if there is a prayer request that you have simply for, or that you want to remain um, private um, and you want just the elders or uh, me to know, please don't hesitate to, um, to type either my name or Carrie's name in the chat, and then that would become a direct message to us. Um, so today, um, there's been so much going on in the world in these last couple of weeks. We're actually in this last week. And so I wanted to, I want to offer a prayer that is an adaptation of a prayer that I read earlier this week from a website called Black Liturgies. So I've adapted it, um, but I'd like to offer it for us this morning. Will you join me in prayer? Oh, holy God, we are tired. We are tired of marching, of rallying, of protesting, of saying our lives matter. Our black, brown, Asian and indigenous lives matter. Our trans lives matter. Our marginalized lives matter. Our whole lives matter. Our allied lives matter. We cannot continue to endure the trauma of violence against our bodies, our black bodies, trans bodies, marginalized bodies. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot continue to endure the trauma of violence against our Asian and Pacific Island siblings. It settles on our skin, on our bodies. Muscles are clenched, hands trembling, something pressing against our chest. Free us, God. Let a spirit rise up to meet our feet against the concrete. Send strength to our shaking voices. Be with us. When we say Black Lives Matter or Stop Asian Hate or Trans Rights or Human Rights, let it be the sound of your voice making its way back to us and grant us rest. Give us the courage to walk away when we need to, to breathe, to hold our children close, to eat and to sleep and to be restored, because this is too much to hold by ourselves. So, oh God, hold it with us. This is just too much. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us as we come to you. Hear us as we lift up to you the joys and concerns that are too much for us to hold on our own. We lift up Matt Lamberg. We lift up the eight FedEx employees who lost their lives at the hands of another gunman. We hold up too many people, Dante Wright, too many. But we also come with joy that Jacob and Renee will be graduating from seminary in May. And so hear us, oh God, as we come to you and speak aloud those joys and concerns that are too much for us to hold in so hear us as we pray. Mm -hmm. 
Burhan Mizrahi. Pray for Joey, for Martha, for Jeremiah, who is five months old, having heart surgery, Amanda and Christopher and Faith, Bob and Christina, Rod and jo Joyce and Paula, Renee. the America First Republicans. We pray that their numbers dwindle as knowledge and tolerance and love take the place of hate. Amen, Susan. Thank you for that. Oh God, you know what is on our hearts and on our minds. You hear us even when we do not speak aloud. You hear us when we can only offer sighs that are too deep for human words. So hear us as we offer these prayers to you. We offer them in the name and in the spirit of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray, and please use the words most familiar to you. Our Creator, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Normally, in a regular worship service, uh, we would be hearing from Jacob about what the kids are going to be doing for worship and wonder. Well, Jacob is finishing up final papers and final projects, and the parent said he could have a day off. So, um, so there won't be any worship and wonder today, um, unless Diana comes up with something real creative at the spur of the moment, and she's shaking her head no. <laughs> um, so there won't be worship and wonder today. We just hold Jacob and Renee and all of our kids who are finishing up projects um, kids, whether they're grown or not, um, we hold all of them in our prayers um, as we as they prepare for the end uh, end of a school year. But it is time for us to think about the ways in which we have a chance to give back to God a portion of that which has already been given to us. And this week marks the 51st anniversary of Earth Day. It's on April 22nd. And I learned once I moved to California that John Muir is the one who kind of invented um, Earth Day. I had no idea. Um, we recognize our calling as stewards we recognize that our calling as stewards means that we are caretakers of the creation God has provided. From Genesis right through the rest of the Bible and on to today, people of faith recognize God's good gifts include Earth's land and air and water on which our lives depend. In this Easter tide, we continue to rejoice in the new life of the resurrected Jesus. Yet our own lives so often ignore the actions we take, we can take to be stewards. 
So today, we pray for our own lives to be raised up and inspired to the point that we might willingly become witnesses to God's love made known in Jesus. As we receive our morning offering, which allows our congregation to thrive, may we also dedicate ourselves to take actions of restoration and resurrection for our earth. So consider recycling and um, doing things like that or planting a tree or planting a garden. As the next song plays, let us think about the ways in which we can give back, not just our financial resources, but what are the other ways we can give back to the healing of the nation and the healing of the planet. Let us give with joy to the mission and ministry of our church. Christ coming again to bring us to heaven, a glorious end to our fall. The trials we face will fade. When all our tears are washed away. Amen. Let us pray. Creating God, 
We thank you for the creation which you freely give to us. In gratitude for your gifts, we respond with our desire to be faith-filled stewards, caring for creation. Please receive and help us use these gifts for the ongoing life of this congregation and for the ways we will engage as witnesses to your desire for full and abundant life on earth. Amen. Is Inverleaf here? It doesn't look like she's here. Okay. I can read. Okay. <clears throat> Our scripture today comes from Luke 24, verses 36 through 48. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish Taking it, he ate it in front of them. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written, the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carrie. When my friends would visit when I was in high school or even younger, my mother would often offer them something to eat. They always seemed to be hungry. So their response was often, yes, ma'am, thank you, because we were raised with good manners. When we got to be older, my friends would come and visit me, and the tone was very different. No longer did my friends need to demonstrate good manners because it was just us, and we were friends. So when I would offer them something to eat, because I was raised right, my friends would reply, sure, what you got? Jesus makes several post-resurrection appearances in the 40 days between Resurrection Sunday and Ascension Day. And depending upon which gospel is read, the first encounter is with the women who come to the tomb to anoint the, the body of Jesus with um, uh, anoint the body with spices and, and, and that kind of thing to, to get ready for uh, a proper burial. Uh, in one version, it's just with Mary alone in the garden. Um, earlier in Luke, earlier than the, than the passage we have today, the appearance is with the two people on the road to Emmaus. And then in our lesson today, he comes to the disciples in the room where they are locked away. They are locked away in the room because they're anxious, afraid, and perplexed. They are not sure what to do next. Jesus isn't here, and the women have said he's been resurrected, but the disciples don't believe the women at first. And depending upon which gospel account you read, it may take them a while before they really do believe. Then in my imagination, the disciples are talking amongst themselves and probably fussing about who should be in charge now that Jesus is gone. That's not, that doesn't take much of a stretch. They argued about that while Jesus was still alive. 
they are likely wondering how to keep the momentum going now that the leader is gone. They killed the dreamer, but did they also kill the dream? Perhaps they are asking each other, what you got? What are your gifts and skills that, what are the gifts and skills that you have to help keep this movement going? What energy do you have to maintain and increase the ministry Jesus started? What are the ways in which you can retell the story of what he did and the ways in which he touched your life, shaped your destiny, helped you identify your call? What are the financial resources you can contribute to this movement? We still need to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and heal the sick and visit those in prison and care for the poor and marginalized and to, pro to provide shelter for those who have none. So what you got? Maybe they were saying it's too scary to continue. Look what they did to Jesus. I don't want that to happen to me. I've got a wife and kids. I don't want to take that risk. So what you got to convince me to stay? What you got to tell me that this is worth it? What you got to tell me that I should not be afraid to walk out of my house because the religious authorities may take me and lynch me, hang me, crucify me? What you got? Then Jesus comes. Ooh. Does he walk through the door, walk through the locked door? Or does he just appear like Captain Kirk and the Starfleet folks after Scotty beams them up? We don't know. He just appears. The disciples are immediately frightened, but now in a different way. They think maybe this time they are wondering if he's a ghost or perhaps a figment of their imagination or Maybe he wasn't really dead after all. What in the world is going on? Maybe they are frightened because Jesus was serious all of the times that he talked about what was going to happen and they just didn't listen or they didn't want to believe him or they simply couldn't imagine anything so horrific. So they just couldn't believe it. But here he is resurrected from the dead, and in their presence. Perhaps they were frightened because Jesus was back, and that meant that everything he told them was true. That whatever the, But whatever the reason for their fear, whatever their reason for their anxiety, Jesus' first response to them was one of compassion. Peace be with you. It was a familiar word. It was something that should have brought them comfort. It was something Jesus said to them before he was arrested. It was right up there with love one another as I have loved you. Don't be afraid. Fear not. You tend to remember those last comments someone says to you before they die. Peace be with you. Peace be with you addresses the grief and the fear that, was, that were felt by the disciples after the death and resurrection of Jesus. But, you know, the resurrection was a miracle, a little overwhelming, just a little bit, maybe for those first disciples and maybe even for us. But Jesus brings peace to the anxious even us. Jesus brings peace to the skeptical, skeptical, even us. Jesus then says to them, why are you startled? Why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See, it's really me. Touch me. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones like you can see, I have. Okay, this bodily resurrection thing is getting kind of weird, right? 
They don't know what to do with this. People who are dead are supposed to stay dead. That whole Lazarus thing, that was kind of strange, right? They weren't ready for this. Jesus knows that this is kind of weird and what should have been a happy moment has become one of great confusion, but he doesn't chastise them. He loves them and he loves us. What I like about this is that Jesus asked them, why are doubts arising in your hearts? He knows that this is incredible. He knows that this movement, which only started about three years before, did not have a secure foundation in the hearts and spirits of the disciples. He knew that they needed something tangible. He knew that they needed him at least a little while longer. Jesus offered, him, offered to them what he had, himself. He offered them his love and his compassion. He offered them more time. So what you got, Jesus? What do you have for us? You give us your whole self in life, in death, in life after death, and yet we still want more. The mood changes. And Jesus then acts like he's among his friends because he is. And he's like my friends. He's hungry. So he asks them, what you got? He gets some fish. But what else might he be asking? What else might he be asking you? What feeds you? What do you have that nourishes your spirit? What are your spiritual disciplines that support you when the times get tough? When you're grieving, when you're worried, when you're frightened or confused, what do you hold on to when pain feels unbearable? What words or activities, what did Jesus leave for us? Well, Jesus would go off alone to pray sometimes. He would talk with his friends. He would have his friends pray. Sometimes they fell asleep, so they weren't terribly reliable, but he still asked them to pray. He would live liturgically. He reminded us of what is at the heart of God, and that is to love to love one another, even strangers, and even our enemies, those people we perceive are our enemies, to love creation and to love ourselves. Finally, I really like this passage because Jesus meets the disciples where they are, and he loves them enough not to leave them there. He commissions them and us to proclaim the good news and live in new ways. And he, he invites us to tell the story throughout the whole world, beginning where we are, beginning in our own communities. So Jesus tells the disciples and us a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in Christ's name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. A change of heart, a, a new way of being, a new way of looking at the world, a new way of reacting and interacting with the world, a change of heart, reconciliation, a change of heart. We need to have, we need to repent. We need to repent of the ways in which we hurt one another. A change of heart and a life for the forgiveness of sins. 
or a change of heart and life, I should say, a change of heart and life. And that change that leads to the forgiveness of sins, of all sins, the little bitty ones like stealing some bubble gum from the grocery store and the big ones like mass incarceration and systemic racism and systemic violence. So the little bitty sins of, of not telling the truth as well as the big systemic sins. We are witnesses of these things. We are witnesses to the life and ministry and death and resurrection of Jesus. There is a lot happening in the world right now that demands for us, demands of us a new way to live. The coronavirus has changed us in many, many ways. The resurgence of anti-Asian violence and the increased awareness of the overreach of, of a militarized police force. The fear that embodies too many of us. The global and national and personal issues that face each one of us make us numb and empowered all at the same time. We are witnesses to God's hope of justice, peace, grace, and love, believing fully that Christ is among all humanity, now and always. The resurrected Christ shows up when we least expect it. The resurrected Christ is with us always and is asking us, so what you got? Is it fear and despair or is it reconciliation and healing? Is it a new perspective, a new role, a new commission? What you got, church? Let's work. Amen. The virtual doors of the church are open. If you have been worshiping with First Christian Church online or in person when we were together, you are invited now to make that commitment of membership if you would like to um, at, at this point. And um, if you've never made a commitment to Christ and, or I should say, or if you've never been baptized and you would like to do that, um, type, in the, type in the chat, hashtag home, if you want to join the church. Hashtag Jesus, if you've never made that commitment and would like to talk about that, or if you've never been baptized and would like to talk about that. As the next song plays, please consider making First Christian Church your new church home. Amen. When the best of me is barely breathing When I'm not somebody I believe in Hold on to me When I miss the light the night is stolen When I'm slamming all the doors you've opened Hold on to me Hold on to me Hold on to me when it's too dark to see you When I am sure I don't feel like I'm worth defending 
Cause I know nobody loves me better Hold on to me Hold on to me As we come into the time of communion, uh, please use whatever elements you have available to you. It doesn't matter if it's juice and bread, tea, cookie, whatever you have. Um, it is more important that we share in this together. When reading the scripture this morning, um, I was struck by the image of Jesus holding out his body to his disciples and asking why they were startled, why they doubted him. How often are we shocked by or doubt the lived experience of others when we ourselves could have no understanding of what they go through? As Pastor Leslie said in her sermon this morning, it has been a heavy week. We have witnessed yet another killing of a bl unarmed black person at the hands of police to yet another killing of a child at the hands of police to yet another mass shooting. We have now surpassed 3 million deaths worldwide due to COVID-19. We have witnessed a lot of public death and grief this week. Unfortunately, it seems to me that none of that is really that new or that uncommon recently. As Jesus tells his disciples in the scripture this morning, they are witnesses to his life sufferings and rise from death. He calls us too to be witnesses to the suffering and injustice in our world. I think too often being a witness can sometimes be conflated with standing by and just watching and doing nothing. But we see in the scripture reading that being a witness is to call for a change of life and heart. To me, being a witness means to not stay neutral to not insist that both sides of a story are equally truthful. And to me, being a witness means standing alongside marginalized communities, believing their lived experiences and advocating for structural change based on what those communities say is best for them, not based on what I think is best for them. We come to the table today after yet another heavy week and Jesus calls us to witness to stand alongside those who have suffered so that we may call for a change of heart and life in the world around us. Will you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, we know you call us to be your witnesses in the world. We come to you today exhausted from the continued violence against black and brown communities, the continued legislation against trans lives, the continued infections and death from COVID-19 and the ups and downs of our own personal lives. We pray today for strength and nourishment so that we may continue to be your instruments of peace and love in the world. Amen. On the night he was to be betrayed and sub subsequently killed by the state, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it saying, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the meal, he took the cup and he blessed it and poured it, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. Amen.
Amen. Thank you for that beautiful service, Pastor Leslie, and for your words, Meg, for everyone who took part and put slides together and made this happen week after week for over a year. I'm so thankful and appreciative of this congregation who came together in a really difficult time to make something beautiful. All right, we just have a few announcements. Um, Make sure you sign up for the intersections. That's our weekly newsletter. You can do that by emailing Andy at andy at conqueredfcc.net. You can follow us on social media. We are at Concord FCC on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And we are also conqueredfcc.net on the web. That's where you can find our website. Um, Tuesday at 7 p.m. we have a finance meeting that's happening over on Zoom. Saturday, uh, next week, weekend, starting at 10 a.m. is the regional annual gathering on Zoom. And next Sunday, 
um, at one o'clock, we have an admin council meeting. So be watching for an email from Lori about that. And that's it, short announcements today, which is great. We uh, wanna make sure that you stick around and join us in the breakout rooms for a little chat with your friends after the final song. But first we're gonna have a blessing from Pastor Leslie. Amen. Let us go forth having laid down our burdens. Let us go forth rich in spirit, knowing that God has a plan for our lives. And let us go forth as witnesses to God's hope of justice, peace, grace, and love, believing fully that Christ is among all humanity now and always. Amen. Before we do, um, before we do all I know, if you want to go to annual meeting, you need to go to the webs to the region's website, um, ccncn.org, and register. Um, so it's not our worship website. It's not our worship link. It's a different link. All right. All I know. Uh, I have three breakout rooms this morning, so uh, let me 